before we create the tube, we're going to have to uh, group these two objects into one and attach a motion path to the curve. So to group it, let's uh, select these two and uh, control, press control G to group and we're just doing it manually to get the Mel, uh, the Mel script for it and we'll copy those and we'll paste it into our script and we could delete these so now we're gonna look at the script and uh, we're seeing and we're gonna take a look at what it's doing it's selecting minus R NURB circle 1 and NURB circle 2 but we don't know if NURB circle 1 or NURB circle 2 is going to be in our scene that's why we've created these variables so we could uh, so we could call tube 1 and tube 2 and it'll always select uh, these two circles that we've created and not NURB circle 1 and NURB circle 2 which uh, the names might change depending on how many NURB circles you have in the scene so we're going to replace NURB circle 1 with uh, tube 1 and we want the first element in this array which is going to be uh, our NURB circle transform and for NURB circle 2 we want uh, tube 2 and again we're using the first in the array and uh, the way arrays work is that they're zero base so they start at zero so the transform is going to be the zero value and the shape is usually the first value so we only want the transforms here and then we're grouping them and again we want the group uh, we want the group to be wrapped in a variable so we know the name of it in mel so we're gonna create a string and call it tube tube group equals and we're wrapping this mel command into the backticks again and what minus r does is it deselects everything and then selects whatever you want otherwise if you put you could uh, use minus add and it'll add to your current selection which we don't want we want the selection to be just tube 1 and tube 2 at this point so we're gonna take our script and we're gonna run it and if we look at our selection we're selecting group 7 so let's look in the outliner and we have group 7 and it's got both of our NURB circles so we created the groups and now let's t let's uh, attach it to the motion path so we're gonna take a look at this we're gonna take a look at our uh, original wires and we're gonna we're gonna select group 7 and then we're gonna shift select the the curve and we're gonna go into the animation tab and then animate motion path attach the motion path and we'll find it we're gonna find our uh, our group here and let's take a look at the motion path so the motion path has uh, variables and as you can see the our uh, our group here isn't oriented correctly so let's just orient it correctly and we'll uh, we'll rotate this 90 degrees and then we'll rotate it we'll rotate the up twist another 90 degrees and now it's oriented correctly to the to the form of the curve and the U value here it's got by default a motion path is gonna create animation so we're gonna wanna go in there 
and right click and delete selected and now so we blasted away the keys so what we want to do is now automate that process we want to automate deleting the U value keys and setting the front twist and up twist to 90 as well as creating the motion path and uh, attaching it so we'll go into our script editor and find out what we actually did here and the first thing we want to do is uh, take our group and attach it to the motion path so we'll go up on our script editor and see where the motion path is actually attached and here it says motion path 1 so motion path 1 was created so that means the first the line directly above it is the the melt script that created the motion path so we're gonna copy that and we're gonna paste that into our melt script and we're gonna take a look at uh, take a look at what it's doing uh, if you want to know exactly what each of these uh, what each of these options are you just go into your mel help file you press F1 in Maya and it'll open up the Maya help documentation and go into commands and type the command you want help with in this case it's path animation and just click on path animation and it'll have uh, every option that path animation takes and it'll explain all of them so for now we'll move this aside and we're not really worried about uh, what the options are we just want to add uh, we just want to add a motion path a default motion path and to do that we want to first make the proper selections so if we'll see what we did well, we selected the group and then we selected the curve and we created the motion path so we'll do the same thing here we'll, pre we'll go into our uh, mel script and type select we want our group so that's to group semicolon we'll put minus R for the option so we know that we're only selecting the tube group at this point and now we want to add to the selection we want to add the nerves curve so for now we'll just put uh, tube curve but we don't have that variable set so let's set let's set it up here string tube curve and we'll set it to this curve right here for now so we'll select that curve and uh, copy the name of it and you want and you want to type in string dollar sign tube curve equals quotation marks the name of the curve and quotation and semicolon so now it'll also add the tube curve which uh, can be changed up here whenever we get to that point whenever we get to that point so we create the path animation and now we'll wrap the path animation into a variable so we could easily select the motion path so again we'll type string we'll call it tube path equals and then we'll uh, we'll put the back tick on the front and back and if you'll notice that in the motion path options there's already a back tick so you can't have uh, back ticks within back ticks and uh, so we'll take a look at what start time u is
and start time U is uh, the starting time of the animation for the U parameter. The default is the current time. So we'll move that away. And uh, we don't really care when the start time is since we're going to be deleting those keys. So we'll just put 0. And then for end time U, we also don't care what the end time is, so we'll put 1. So now we have uh, our string 2 path, and that's going to be our motion path. Now let's go up and see where we're deleting the keyframe. And it looks like uh, cut key is that is the melt script for uh, for deleting the keyframes. So we'll take that and we'll paste that in. And uh, minus t is time, and the time is in quotations. So uh, if you want to cut, if you want to delete the keys from say zero to two hundred, you want to put zero colon. 200. If you don't have those numbers in the beginning and end, it'll delete all the keys, and that's what we want. So, AT is attribute, U. It already, uh, it already filled all of that in for us because we did it manually, so that's perfect. And uh, motion path 1. Again, we don't know what, uh, what the motion path will be called when we create it, so we want to go back to our uh, two path variable because that'll always contain the motion path that we're uh, that we're operating on. So we'll put dollar sign to path. So here we've deleted the keys. And now we want to set the front twist and the up twist to 90. And here we have uh, we have those already set up because we did it manually. And we'll paste those in the front twist and the up twist so to set the attribute the command is set attribute set attr and then the object and the attribute and then what value you want so here we're again operating on motion path one but we don't want that we want to uh, go back to our two path variable so let's delete that delete both of those and as you can see this is wrapped in a quotation so we can't just we can't just throw in two path and expect that to work we have to because two path is itself a string and this is a string so we have to add these two strings together and to do that let's uh, create parentheses around the quotation marks and we'll say We'll put in our two path variable plus and then quotation marks period front twist. So it's just going to fill in two path, which is going to be motion path one or two or whatever it's going to be, and plus and then it's going to add dot front twist. And we want to do the same thing here, so let's just copy that paste it and don't forget the closing parentheses and let's uh, let's delete what we have currently and we'll try uh, we'll try it we'll try it again except this time using the script so we're gonna take our take our full script and select all and run it and we haven't got any errors and here we have uh, we have our two curves attached to the path and we've automated that whole process and we also have the option of changing the radius on uh, this object so let's uh, undo that and try to change the radius 
we'll set it to 1.5 and now we'll run our script again and it's smaller just to give an example let's do a let's do another one at 5 and you can see that it automates that whole process for us and it attaches it to the motion path automatically and another nice thing is that we can replace we can replace any of these curves so let's say we want uh, we want to work on Christmas lights 02 instead of Christmas lights 01 so let's copy that and in our script where it says tube curve we want to exchange we want to replace it with Christmas lights 02 and we'll run our script and it automatically attaches it to the motion path and it orients it properly so now the next step is going to be to create the tubes to extrude these tubes on this path